25 Ways to Hide Your Valuables in Minecraft If you've ever played around on a Minecraft server, you're well aware that some players can be thieves. So to avoid those greedy folks, here are some of the best ways to sneak away your diamonds and netherite. And hey, as you can see from this number, we're getting painfully close to 2 million subscribers. It's, it's so close we could hit it this week if you subscribe. So if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Thanks and enjoy the video. Number one, when barrels got added into Minecraft, they are kind of a status quo change. I mean, for so long, if you wanted to store your items, you had to do it in something that looked like this. But luckily for us, barrels look like a full block, meaning we can hide them in some pretty clever ways. And my personal favorite might just have to be putting an upside down barrel in between your floorboards. As you can see with these examples, we can tuck these away in some pretty inconspicuous places like underneath the bed or some other chests, and boom, you just can't even notice it. Meaning if you want a flush way to incorporate these into your build, you're going to be able to do such. Number two, even though Minecraft chests are fully capable of being waterlogged in recent updates, as it turns out, they do way more benefit if we put one of these underneath a lava lake. Unlike the clear blue ocean, this stuff is very tough to see through, which means all the more reason that you should tuck away your valuables there. Look, I know it seems daunting to put it this close to lava, but it's not gonna burn up, so even if you put it down there, everything's gonna stay safe. And as long as you set it up where you're able to reach these items inside of the lava lake without getting too close to comfort to the magma, I think you'll be all right. Number three, while your valuable items and fire don't tend to mix, actually putting them in a campfire is a different story, or rather underneath the campfire. As you can see here, the only way we're able to access the items underneath is by extinguishing this campfire. When it's lit, you got no hope, but as soon as it's extinguished, you're able to go through the ashes and actually pick up your stuff. Now, this is a very weird method, and frankly, I haven't seen it done too often. But look, if you wanna go on that camping trip and keep the explorers from, well, exploring your items, this might be your best shot. Number four. Now, if you've ever taken the time to listen to some kind of building tutorial on Minecraft, then you very well know that you should always decorate your builds. And surprisingly, decorative blocks can do this very well. For example, let's look at a dropper. When you look at its face, it's not exactly a looker, but if you tuck it away this way, then you actually get a pretty nice stone texture to use in your builds. Just like that, we solve two different problems. You not only deck out your house, but also your storage system. And while these work great wherever you put them, I should warn you that you should try to put this out of the range of any kind of misclicks. Tuck it in the corners like this one, and you might just be able to get away with it long enough to keep your stuff safe. Number five. While there are many different ways in the game to hide a different chest item, as it turns out, if you just add five iron to the back of that in a crafting table, then all of a sudden you can make a pretty good hidden minecart chest. This new entity is way easier to push into corners, and you can definitely see that with this bookshelf. From a first glance, it's hard to notice anything, but as soon as we get closer, you'll see a bit of gray popping out, right click on that, and boom, all of your stuff's safe and clean. Which I think is pretty sweet, even if you only get one chest worth of storage here as opposed to the full double. Number six, you don't have to look at Minecraft for too long to realize that some textures get reused in different spaces. And while from a game design standpoint that makes sense, what it can actually allow us to do is make some pretty great camouflage. Like take for instance, putting a stone button on top of a stone block. Just like that, if someone's looking at this machine dead on, they're not really gonna notice the extra depth there. Meaning if you tuck away a stone button inside of an actual cave system, then it's a pretty solid way to tuck away your items for a hidden switch. Just make sure you remember where you place this because I can imagine this could be pretty easy to lose if you try to go back and find it. Number seven, when you first find a village in Minecraft, what's your first instinct? Loot it, of course, most people would. And while that almost guarantees that any repeat visitors are just gonna find empty ransacked chests, you can actually use that to your advantage. Especially if you're in a village that's nearby the server spawn, no one's ever checking the chests after it's already been looted. Meaning at a certain point late stage into the game, you can just hide your items there and no one's gonna be any the wiser. As far as they're concerned, they're expecting to just see an empty chest full of dust or something when they open it up. Not anyone's diamonds. Number eight. One of the key rules in magic is to use the art of misdirection. So even though putting your stuff in a regular chest would be too obvious, you can instead use those as a decoy facade and hide a barrel accessible through the normal storage chests. Like we said, the hitboxes of these two things are very different, so you're actually able to go at the corner and access your stuff even through a regular chest. Just like that, any onlookers will just suspect that it's a normal storage chest, because for them, they can't open it, so it seems like it is. But as long as they pay no attention to the barrel behind the curtain, you might just get away with hiding your stuff right in plain view of them. 
Number nine, let's say you're on a Minecraft farm, and while that's going well for you, you actually wanna tuck away your prized golden hoe. Completely understandable, but when you're out there in the field, a chest looks pretty obvious. So instead, for any farm hands looking to keep their items safe, you actually might benefit from making a tilled soil trick. 99% of the time that you look at it, this dirt just looks like that, dirt. But as soon as you come through and use your hoe on that soil, then all of a sudden, you're able to peek through that one little gap and then actually see your items. All it takes is a few jumps to cover up your tracks, and just like that, your crop cash is hidden away in a safe. Number 10. Clearly, just tilling the soil is a pretty good way to tuck away your items inside a barrel, but we can push it one step further. You see, what happens here is that when we till the dirt, it actually updates a block update detector piston. And once that gets triggered, it's to your heart's desire. And then, after you're done looking and checking on your prized pickaxe, all you gotta do is reset this contraption. It's as simple as that. But one thing I will note is that this is probably gonna work best in a biome that doesn't have grass naturally occurring, which overall is gonna guarantee that you're the one who's in charge of when those items get shown. And honestly, that's the whole point of building this system anyway. Number 11. Minecraft has a ton of different options for storing items in a container. And while in the past when we talked about weird storage, I said that brewing stands might be the strangest option, furnaces are just one step up from being just that weird. But luckily, unlike those brewing stand counterparts, we can put anything we want in the first slot of the furnace. Which means, fortunately for us, if you have a deactivated super smelter, then we can actually use that to store away your items. Just tuck them away in the mechanics, and no one's gonna be any of the wiser as long as they're not going to cook something up. Number 12. Now, upon first inspection, when you check out this barrel, it just seems to be empty. And while that looks like that's the entire system, don't get it twisted. We can actually do so much more here. Because as you can see, the real secret here is that when I go and flip this lever in a different location, now the items actually start to come into the barrel. The whole empty thing was just a phase, and luckily we sorted that out soon enough. Through the help of hoppers and droppers, we're able to get everything inside of the chest as we want. And then, as soon as you're done, just go back over here and flip the switch again. Everything drains out out and the whole process is left to an empty barrel once again. Number 13. Now, if you've ever taken a good long step back from your storage system, then you know that at a certain point, chests just render out of your sight. And while sometimes that can be a nuisance, we can actually use it to some pretty great feats here. You see, if you were to say, tuck a shulker box right up at the top of the world limit, then to anyone on the ground, it's gonna look completely invisible. I mean, even if it was visible, it's still not exactly easy to get up to Y256 to go grab your stuff. But the fact that just flat out you cannot see it from the ground already makes this better. And hey, this gives you an excuse to bust out the elytra a couple more times, which honestly, I'm completely fine with. Number 14. Buried treasure as a concept is a tale as old as time. And while most of us in Minecraft primarily experience these through the sunken treasure ships and ruins of old, why should the pirates get to have all the fun? Personally, something that I love to do is make a buried treasure chest right in the middle of nowhere. And then, through the help of something like the lodestone, or if you're boring, coordinates, then you can actually remember where this is hidden when you want to come back to it. Or you know what, if you want to get even more creative with this, then what you could do is just make an X on the spot and then lock the map so that even when you remove the the X, it's still marked there on the map itself. That's going the extra mile, and if you go through all that effort, then I genuinely hope that all of your items stay safe. Number 15. While there's plenty of different creative things that you can make with soul sand, whether that's a slowness trap or a bubble elevator, this probably has to be my favorite. With a situation like this, if you ride a minecart over this, it actually snaps through the rail with you intact and still goes under the floor. Meaning that if you were to go to say a soul sand valley and set one of these up, all you gotta bring is the rails in your inventory and you're able to get a secret entrance right down to your hidden valuables. Is it weird? Absolutely, but I also think that's gonna deter anyone from ever trying it, because really, who would think of this anyway? Number 16. Mass item storage is a pretty common thing amongst most servers, especially late game. And while most of the time people would just label these for dirt, stone, cobble, etc., that's not exactly a hard and fast rule. You see, a particularly sneaky method might just be hiding in your valuables within one of these mass storage systems. Because really, who's going around checking out your third double chest full of cobble? At that point, they see it as a foregone conclusion that that's all that's there, which gives you the full opportunity to put your valuables in there, label it as something else, and maybe pass it off as another storage. Number 17. Regular Minecraft chests aren't exactly inconspicuous, but shulker boxes on the other hand can tell a different story. You see, with these, we're able to dye out a whole slew of colors, and that gives us some more to play around with, meaning it might just be beneficial to hide your valuables in something like a green shulker that you tuck amongst the green grass, or maybe disguise a brown shulker as one of the tree's branches. I mean, even a white mushroom stem shulker box 
Roblox could work fine here. If you're willing to get creative, there's plenty of different ways to hide these things in plain sight. Number 18. Now, maybe it's just me, but when I'm going around someone else's redstone machinery, I feel like I cannot touch anything. And I'm assuming most respectable players feel the same way. Which means, if you want to be a little devious, you can actually tuck away your items inside the redstone machinery. If they're not completely in the know with how the wiring works, then they're just going to see that barrel that you put up there is completely necessary to the build. And from there, you play off that expectation and just hide your valuables right inside that. I mean, in fairness, it is your redstone contraption, so it makes total sense for you to go back there and check on the wiring every now and then. Number 19. Item frames might just be the least useful way to hide your items, but we can use those item frames to our advantage. You see, by using a comparator system like this, we can actually make an item frame based on locking system. As you can see, just by rotating this item in the item frame in a specific direction, we're able to completely reveal what we got going on here. And then when you're done, just rotate it again. Simple as that. And as long as your friend doesn't have a compulsion to touch absolutely everything they see, you might be able to leave this stone unturned. Number 20. As it turns out, shulker boxes aren't just helpful for storing your items, but also to helping you get to your storage. What I mean by that is, if you have the shulker box here and you open it up, you might just see it as just that, a shulker box. But when you stand on top of it with a ceiling like so, and then you actually open it up, you can phase through the floor through the shulker box and get to the actual goods. It's a very strange process, and it definitely feels like a bug, or at the very least, a manipulation of the hitboxes. But at this point, who cares? You're already down there with your diamonds, and the mission's complete. Number 20. 21. Anyone who's ever played around in creative knows very well that you can't place blocks underneath bedrock. But while you can't place any blocks down there, that doesn't exactly mean that you can't place entities. And that we can use to our advantage. See, if you go down here, we can actually set up something small called a void base. Which, through the help of things like minecart chests, you can actually store full items right down there in the bottom of the world. Just make sure not to bump into anything while you're down there. Because if you knock that minecart off course, yeah, I don't think you have to worry about hiding those valuables anymore. More. Number 22. As we know, redstone can make for a pretty great way to hide your valuables. But if anyone has any kind of passing knowledge for how it works, it can be pretty easy to figure it out. So if we want to get a little more clever, we can take it up a level by making a multi-part entrance. And what's beautiful about this system is that if someone ever finds out the pattern, you can just add on more steps. At a certain point, even if they're keeping up with you, they're just going to get tired of it. And fortunately for you, that exhaustion likely means that your items are going to live to see another day. As long as you remember the pattern, you're going to be able to access them as well. Number 23. When people talk about hiding money in the floorboards, it's normally in jest. But what might sound crazy in the real world, in Minecraft actually plays out a little differently. You see, if you have a setup like this where you're using trapdoors for your floor, which already looks good so people would just let it slide, but what they might not know is that whole time while they're walking around your base, they're actually stepping on a couple of your items. But again, I will mention that if you go about making one of these, you gotta remember where you keep it in the floor. Because nothing's gonna look more conspicuous than you flipping over in every single trap door on your floor trying to find your diamonds. Number 24. While most of us decide to password protect our saves by using the password built into our computers, we can take it one step further. And as you can see here, by using hoppers, we can make some form of item sorter system to actually use pass keys in our base. Type out this long string of characters that no one ever knows on a piece of paper or some named item, and then only if it matches the one that's in there will people be able to go to your hidden stuff. It is a pretty good system, and while I don't exactly think we're going to get two-factor authentication for your netherite, Right, this might be the closest thing. Number 25. Now, if you've been paying attention, you notice we talked about many different fun and creative ways to keep your items safe, with one notable exception. And that's, of course, the ender chest. Now, folks, even if I personally think the ones before are more fun, this is the undisputed champion. I mean, regardless of what server you're playing on, that ender chest is linked to you and only you. So whatever you put in there, it's going to be safe. So while sometimes it might be fun to hide some of your less valuable things in some of these weirder locations, when you really want to play it safe, then you just got to rely on this big guy. And with that, folks, find that valuable sub button down below and have a good one. All right.